Hey everyone, excited to be taking you through a couple of new features that have come out for HubSpot Sales Hub at the pro and enterprise level that are really aimed to make your sales rep experience more efficient and more enjoyable inside of HubSpot and give that sales rep a singular unified view in, inside of one tool to really be able to complete all of their day-to-day -day tasks. The first part I'm going to be touching on is what is called prospecting. So this uh, tool is the, the prospecting workspace. The goal is that for any prospecting uh, needs, your sales rep could work solely out of this uh, page using the different functionalities and features that are included inside of the pro prospecting workspace to be able to use HubSpot and stay inside of HubSpot to complete generally all of their tasks. So just quickly calling out kind of what we're seeing at the home page of prospecting. So I am seeing my own personal prospecting workspace here. Kind of in this top left, we'll see our task progress for today our, and tasks that are overdue. So I don't have any overdue, but I do have a few tasks that are due today. And this just gives me a breakdown of how I'm doing, how many I've completed, how many I need to complete. We also get a breakdown of meetings that have occurred um, at different intervals. So we can see monthly, weekly, and quarterly. Then moving over to the middle pane. So this is our task sec section. So any tasks that are due today for this rep will show up here. Any overdue tasks will show up here. And then any tasks that are due tomorrow will show up in this pane. The next section we'll see is sequences. So if you're using sales sequences, you will be able to quickly and easily be able to tell where different contacts are in the sequence and how it's performing and easily be able to uh, quickly pull up contacts that are in those sequences. So for instance, I have a prospecting call heavy sequence where I have one contact enrolled and it's at step one right now. If I had multiple sequences uh, going right now or multiple contacts enrolled in, a, in, a, in the same sequence, I would have ability to see all of that at this point here. Then on the bottom left side here, we have the schedule. So if you integrate and set up the connection with your calendar, either through Gmail or Outlook to connect your calendar, you can uh, sync those events directly into HubSpot and they will be visible um, here. So these are all events um, that were scheduled outside of HubSpot, but you'll also see I have seven tasks due, which are tasks specifically created for me inside of HubSpot. So this will not only give you your events from outside of HubSpot that have been sent to you or that you've, you've sent out, you'll also have all your tasks at, at this level as well. And this gives you the singular day view um, here. We then have leads, and this is HubSpot's approach to leads and lead management. We'll definitely be going more in depth into this piece, but for now, just know that you can see the leads themselves at this level. The first thing I wanna really get into more depth is the task and the task management features, which are really great with this. So we have our task due today, and you can see all of these are really clickable, but I'm gonna go ahead and click start all seven tasks that are due today. And we now get a really nice view of everything we need to do today um, in a view where we can quickly and easily navigate without opening up more tabs, opening up windows, whatever it may be. We can then, right now we are on all tasks. We could filter this down to our to-dos, to our emails, to our calls, and we can even get more uh, into, into different areas if needed. I'm gonna go back to do today, all tasks though, and just show what this looks like. So I have a task to call Brian um, here, I could click edit and I could actually edit the task details themselves. So if I needed to add notes or anything like that, that would happen. But I could then actually create the, make the call from here. So I know I need to call Brian. I could then go ahead and make the phone call here. Again, if you have um, calling set up, this would then automatically log and mark this completed. You also have the ability to manually mark this completed. So if I just hit this, I can do this. I, it gives you the option to create a follow-up task. I'm going to say no. And now that task has been completed and it's moved out of my view here. 
So then I could say, I want to go to this one instead, or I want to go to this one and complete this one. But this really gives you a streamlined view of what your tasks are and easily be able to go through these very quickly and very efficiently. Next item I want to touch on is going to be the scheduling and kind of calendar functionality. So again, in the bottom left here, we can see our today's schedule, which we have syncing from, in my, in my case, Google, uh, as well as seeing tasks that are due today inside of HubSpot. We also have a schedule tab up top. So this actually gives you a calendar view into your calendar here inside of HubSpot. So instead of having to navigate outside of HubSpot to see these, um, you can navigate these directly inside of HubSpot itself. And again, we can see our tasks due. We could start get to that start all tasks due pane that we showed previously from here. We can launch meetings from here if there are meeting links. Um, and you'll notice the key here of calendar events, HubSpot meetings, and then calls, uh, meeting, uh, calls, to-dos, and emails will be different colored on your calendars if you have them set for specific times. So this really just gives you a really simple, easy to navigate and use calendar view directly inside of HubSpot. Next feature I want to show is the sequences section. So we'll notice in the middle right now we have a sequences option. This will show each sequence type that you have uh, where contacts are currently enrolled. So I have a prospecting call heavy sequence currently going on and I have one contact enrolled and it is currently at step one. I can go ahead and click this and I can actually see all activity for this specific um, or all automated emails for the specific sequence. So if I had multiple contacts enrolled in this right now, I'd be able to see all of those specific actions for uh, the sequence itself. I can then also navigate down into specific steps of the sequence. So right now, this, um, this contact is in step one of the sequence, so I'm only showing step one, but over time, more and different steps would be available and if I had multiple contacts, we, we could filter down into all those different steps. But this really gives you a, a really nice way to see where all your contacts are in the steps and easily navigate those. The next piece I want to show is the feed. So this is tied into the sequences in a bit. Uh, so this will actually show us all contacts and leads that have taken general action. So I have an email send for this sequence. If they were to open that email, I would get another activity feed if the lead visits a page, if they view a document, if they fill out a form. So this is really like your kind of social media activity feed for things that a contacts are doing inside of HubSpot. So this really gives us a good feed where we can then go ahead and take actions on this. Uh, we can put notifications on, we can create tasks off of this, we can do specific things based on these uh, activities. Last piece I want to run through will be leads and how HubSpot's implementing them and how you can go about using them in your own sales workflow today. So if we go to here, which is our prospecting workspace, we'll see we have a lead section in the uh, bottom where we have our different lead stages of new attempting connected evaluating and we have the ability to look at our two existing leads in the new stage. We also have the ability to look at leads from more of a table or view uh, based way where we can see the name, the company, if it's associated, the stage, last activity and next activity. We can also set labels on these of hot, cold um, and warm. I'll put this one to cold. And on the general structure. So leads are not a new object in and of itself leads are attached to contacts and or companies so a contact will have a lead associated to it or potentially multiple leads same with a company um, so if you're doing um, individual outreach to people you can make a lead on a contact if you're doing account based you can also make a lead specifically on a company as well I'm gonna go ahead and go back to here and go into this view of uh, new leads here. So you'll see here, we have the Google company object with a lead object attached to it that is currently in the new stage. We can easily move this into 
different uh, stages based on where they are. We'll also touch on the automated features of the lead stages as well in a, in a second, but you can manually move these. And to create a lead, you can either create a lead manually or based on life cycle stage, you can automatically generate a lead. So I think a, a good use case right now would be if a, if a lead goes to a marketing qualified lead state, but you need to further qualify it to make sure it becomes a SQL, either through a call or an email or some sort of outreach maybe, that would be a really good use case where you would want to create a lead and then have the rep or, or booker or whoever's responsible work the lead to either qualify it or disqualify it. To show what this looks like, um, and just from this view, we can easily navigate our leads from here that are in this stage. We can easily change the stage. So I'm gonna just go ahead and disqualify, and I have the functionality set up where it will require disqualification reason. So we're gonna say no interest, we also then have the ability to create follow-up tasks for this um, lead specifically. This could be an email call to do. We're just gonna go ahead and not do that and then we'll disqualify the lead and they no longer show up in our section here. Another piece I wanna call out is the automated functionality of, of leads. So we're actually gonna go to our follow up with leads again. And I'm gonna go ahead and write an email of random things and send this off. So you'll notice now this lead automatically went to attempting. So as soon as I make a call, an email, have a meeting, whatever it is, they will automatically move into an attempting state. And if the call is successfully completed or if the email is open and responded to, it'll move into a connected state automatically as well. So we're now in an attempting state and let's just say they go ahead and these, the Gavin Belson is good for us. We are gonna qualify him. I now have functionality set up where it's gonna require me to create a deal once I qualify the lead. So you don't have to have this functionality on, but for this use case we do. We're gonna go ahead and qualify. And from here, we can directly create a deal for this lead in whatever pipeline and stage we need with whatever amount and uh, fields, fields we need. So you'll notice here, it's automatically associating the contact as well as pulling in their company. And we're gonna go ahead and create this deal. Just to show what this looks like, we're gonna go into this deal as well. And we can see we have a contact and a company. But if we scroll down, we also see a lead attached to this deal. So because we created the deal from this lead, you can easily see that a lead was the source of this deal at this level. If you have any questions or you want some help configuring or getting training on these, some of these new features, please feel free to reach out and we will be in contact with you as quickly as possible.